Welcome to the Rock the Stage Media book release party, celebrating the new release of the author and the speaker and coach, Bill Hubbard, AKA the recruited guy. Today, we're gonna have a, a brief discussion with Bill about his latest release, Expect Success, The Science of the Over 50 Career Search. That's gonna be our main topic here tonight. And we're gonna have some other special guests drop on along the way and brag on him, talk about him, highlight the book a little bit and have some fun. It's also gonna allow the audience to ask questions later on here tonight. You're gonna to ask your own questions of the expert and learn more from him. And if you would like to learn more about Rock the Stage Media, by the way, uh, you can always help us to have more release parties, learn more about the coaching. Just contact me, rich at richbontrager.net. Again, that's rich at richbontrager.net. And our team will drop that into the chat as well. So you can uh, get to know us and learn more about the different events and activities that we have going on here tonight and throughout the year. So tonight I also do wanna mention, please a uh, special request, mute your mics as much as you can so we can allow this to be recorded. Uh, Bill will have this on playback and we wanna have a good clean hearing experience for everyone as, as well here tonight. Listen, take notes, be ready to ask your own questions. When it comes time to open it up to you, the crowd, we wanna make sure you get to ask your questions live on the show. We'll talk about more in just a little few moments. Well, let's get this party rolling, shall we? Let's get this on with a friend of Bill's, a friend of mine, a fellow national speaker, an association speaker, and nsa -er, Eddie Turner, is going to be coming on in just a moment. Eddie is an on-demand leadership development expert. He is changing the face of leadership as a principal consultant and executive coach at LinkEdge, Inc., an international leadership development firm, and Eddie is a certified speaking professional or a CSP. By the way, he's ranked number nine on the top 30 list of motivational speakers. And Eddie, I'm gonna let you come on down here and uh, allow you to maybe um, share a little bit of how you know our guest, Bill Hubbard tonight. Rich, thanks so much. What a pleasure to be here. I met my good friend, Bill Humbert, in around about eight years now, I think it's what it's been. And we were at the NSA convention and we immediately hit it off. And we hit it off for one good reason. Bill is simply a nice guy. He's a nice guy. We had a great conversation, but I learned that he's more than a nice guy. Bill is a true expert. He's an expert at what he does. Bill is, as you said earlier in the conversation there, Rich, he is known as the recruiter guy. He's the best of the best when it comes to recruiting. He understands talent. He understands talent management and how to develop talent. And I've experienced him uh, with someone near and dear to me, what he can do when it comes to coaching someone and understanding their value and understanding how to approach the job search and the job market. I had a chance to even interview him on my show, the Keep Leading Podcast. And Bill did something that he doesn't always do on a public forum. And that is he revealed his interviewing secrets, but his compensation negotiation secrets. He really understands the full throttle. And, and what I'm excited about is, you know, I do a lot of work now in my, my work at Linkage as a principal consultant and executive coach in the space of inclusion. And when we talk about inclusion, a lot of times we're talking about historically uh, underrepresented groups. And one of those groups that we sometimes skip and forget about is the over 50 group. Ageism creeps into the workplace. Uh, and so I love this new book that he's released, Expect Success, The Science of the Over 50 Career Job Search. No, you're not done because you're over 50. There's still a long run rate. And he shows the secrets in this new book of how to get it done from, do you need a LinkedIn profile? What do you do with the LinkedIn profile? I think one of the chapters is called LinkedIn lunacy <laughs> or something to that effect. So he really does a deep dive in, in, into the things that you need in your search. And I've just lost track. I think this is book like number five. I think he's done 135 uh, national television interviews. So just a phenomenal guy a true expert and a good, good man. 
So I'm honored to be here and be part of this to talk about my good friend, Bill Humbert. Eddie, thank you very much for setting this up. That's a great way to do it. And you didn't give away all the goodies in the book. You don't want to give away all the goodies yet, brother. Thank you very much, Eddie. Great to have you with us. Sit back and enjoy this. We're going to get things uh, rolling deeper now as Bill Hubbard is an amazing guy. I've had the pleasure to get to know him for the last several years. A lot of laughs, a lot of jokes, fun time. And we've been working on having this book release party for a while. With over 40 years of expert professional recruiting experience, he's mingled with over 26 years of expert career coaching experience as well. Bill is uniquely qualified to speak, author, and coach on the talent attraction, the career search, and the proper goal setting tactics that Eddie was just talking about. He's the author of three career books, by the way. He's had 104 plus consecutive weeks of the talent hashtag attraction, Tuesday hashtag, and over 104 consecutive weeks of the job search, Friday thought leadership. He's had blogs. He's had 133 different television interviews and many podcasts and radio interviews. Today, we are launching his third book, An Expert Success, Expect Success, The Science of Over 50 Career Search. Welcome, center stage right now, Bill Hubbard. Here's your book, re Here's your book release party, my friend. How are you doing tonight? Thank you, Eddie. I'm doing great. This is fun. <laughs> and, and thank you, Rich. But, you know, it's so much fun seeing Eddie. I, Eddie and I just really connected and we continue to connect and he's such a great guy. He's an amazing speaker. So if you ever get the opportunity to see Eddie speak, uh, jump on. Well, Eddie's great. Again, we got some other surprises coming up and again, we're all excited for you. We're thrilled for this, but I'm kind of curious here. Why did you write a book on the over 50 career search and with the tagline of expect success? It's not easy to go back out there 50 plus, but you're saying you can do it. Absolutely. You know, Rich, in uh, March 15th of 2020, we had this little shutdown called a pandemic. And that's when my business pivoted and I started coaching people who were looking for a new job. And I coached 32 professionals from March 15th, 2020 to December 31st, 2020 to find new positions. And one of them is actually sitting here. <laughs> and, um, and for me, the, the excitement was only kind of softened because many of those people were over 50. One of them was 66, a CFO, who just figured he was stick a fork in him. He was done. And he just... He only took about three months to find a new CFO position. And the best part was it was part-time and he was making more money than he was at his previous <laughs> company. So what I found was a lot of the people who were 50 or approaching 50 were going, I don't, I think I'm done. I don't think there's anything I can do. And that's the reason why I chose expect success. If you expect success, you'll realize success. So expect it. Again, your book is kind of a guide. It's a roadmap it's, and fantastically laid out. But I'm kind of curious. Uh, your book is a career search book. Go to Google, go to Amazon. There's a bazillion of the books out there. Why did you pick this idea of career search? You could have written on many other things, but why this? Well, you know, I wrote my book instead of chapters, the chapters are called steps. Mm -hmm. And I wrote my book in an order where it's literally a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step, uh, path to go find your next position. So you can read it as a novel and, and then follow it straight through. Or if you're already into your search and you want to now pick up at LinkedIn or picked up, pick up at the interviewing step, you can do that. So it, it's... I. I just am so excited about how the book ended up. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, Daria Mioli did a wonderful job as an editor for me. And, uh, and so one of the other people here, Tom Grindalski, he, he was the one that made the suggestion. He, he read it just before it, we sent it to publishing. 
And he made the suggestion to put in a section about dinner interviewing. Oh. And so, you know, so it's, it's been kind of a team thing for me and I just enjoyed writing it. It was, it was fun. So in just a moment, I'm going to read a quote from the book because it is, it's, it, it is a journey. It's not a read through highlight, put it back on your shelf and just learn about it. So let me take you to almost the middle of the book here, Bill. And you, you're talking about your personal interview day, the preparation for it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure at age 50, we've all been interviewed many, many times. We've all prepared for it. But it's very interesting. You start off with congratulations. Today is a day that you're going to shine. You are preparing for anything that the interview team can throw at you. You're really a positive guy, Bill. You really believe they're going to go out and crush it because you set them up for success, right? And today's the day. Why do you talk that way? Why, why, why do you really present it that, that way that they can go prepare and launch into this? That's the way I am. You know, it's the, if you're going to expect success, you start at the beginning expecting success. And then every step through, you follow that philosophy and you follow that practice. And so that's important for for everybody to understand that every step that you go through is one that it's a step that you will succeed because you've already prepared for it. So you're always a positive guy in the room. I love it about you. So let me turn the question around a little bit. What prevents people in this over 50 age range, professionals, strong leaders, what keeps them from going back out and going for the position to believe they can do that? What are maybe the unhappy moments that hold them back? Every person, you know, let's, let's say they were laid off. And, and even if they weren't laid off, let's say that they just decided that I got to leave this place. I just have, you know, I, in order to maintain my sanity, I got to get out. Both of those people are going to go through the stages of grieving mm. because the ones that got laid off all of a sudden don't have a job anymore. And they're wondering, how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to pay for college for our daughter or son? They're in the grieving process and they're, and they're having a difficult time. And then the ones that thought that they had found their last job and they're going to stay there forever. And then suddenly maybe they have a new manager and that manager is making life terrible for them. And they're saying, I got to get out of here. And they're going to go through grieving too. So that first step, I talk about the grieving process and how to work through that. And, and if you follow those, that part of the, the book, what it does is it reinforces how much good you have in you and how important you are, not only to your family, but also to your work environment. So that emotional side is definitely a, 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 a really huge part of this. The game back out there, emotionally, you got to be square and good to go, but it is an uphill battle for a lot of people to get back out there, right? The game has changed a lot too, right? Yes. So they, so they need, you know, throughout my book, you know, at the end of each step, I have a little checklist. Have you done this yep. yet? Have you done that yet? <laughs> and, and it's important to follow through and get every step because the, Career search mirrors the sales process line by line by line. And, you know, and people don't want to be salespeople, a lot of them. And, and so what I do is I say, hey, look, let's just get through the sales process real quick. And now you got a job. You don't have to worry about sales anymore. So let's talk a little bit about why it's changed. Let's just pick on LinkedIn. Eddie referred to it, brought, brought, brought it up right away. So LinkedIn is one of the best best business tools. It's great. You have to have the profile. You have to be out there. You have to be networking. Let's talk about the networking. And it is important, right? That's clearly in your book. It is important. You must go out there and utilize these tools correctly. So how do you do it? So let's, let's take one step back. What most people want to do is the easy way. And the easy way is to get on a job board, you know, I'm not going to mention the one that begins with a big I. And, and then they go, they find a job and they post. And then they pray 
that the right <laughs> person is looking at their resume. And I got some really bad news. They're not. <laughs> it's some machine, some computer out there going, yeah, no, Humbert, you're not, you're out. So networking is, a, is something that I, I coach everybody to do. And what happens is many times they will say, I, I don't know how to network. <laughs> That's why I said the <laughs> game has changed. It really has changed. It, but it's, you know, they everybody's been networking since they're three years old. You know, I, I noticed that one of my sisters is on this. And so when she was three years old and I walked by with an ice cream cone, I'll bet you that she went, where'd you get that? <laughs> That's networking. Or yesterday I was on a call and we were talking about networking and we we're talking and he was somebody I went to college with and he said yeah you know networking for me was so who's the easiest professor for this course but what do you so what happens when you hear i don't know how to network okay so you said the ice cream thing but but they they don't know how to use a tool they don't know how to use a thread they don't know who the hashtag they don't know how to have a profile that's compelling what do you do with the person that literally says I don't know how to do this anymore. Well, they, you know, the hashtags and all that stuff, that's not networking. So networking is picking up this wonderful device. You know, it's got a lot of apps on it. And one of them is a phone. Amazing. It's got a phone on it. And you get on the phone and you call somebody <laughs> and you talk to them. So it's important to talk to people when you're networking because that makes it alive. And when you're making it come alive, then you're, you're causing that person's neurons to go, oh, wow, yeah, that, I know somebody you should talk to. And that's the reason networking is so successful. So let's take another step back into the book here again. We're on page 56 here a little bit. You, you say, what is the role of cover letters? And you also go into a, a paragraph area of do you do not wait to update? First of all, in the digital age, are cover letters and resume important? Yes or no? Depends on the company. I, I, when people talk to me about cover letters, I say, you know, some companies require them, but keep it succinct. And then I put on my recruiting hat and I ask, how many cover letters do you feel I've read in the past four years? Mm. I, 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 I was going to say one or two. I was going to say just one or two. Just one. I, you know, if you don't have your information that's applying to that job, the cover letter doesn't make a difference because I'm just looking at your resume real quick. You have, and I was, I was measured in 1993 by Andrea. And she, as I went through a stack of about 150 resumes, and she found that I spent as little as two seconds on a resume and those went into the definitely interested or definitely not interested stack. I spent as much as 12 seconds on a resume. Most of those went into the definitely not interested or the painful, I'll take another look stack. And I averaged six seconds of resume. So you have wow. six seconds to get my attention. And, you know, that was 93. So I like to think that maybe I've improved since then. So what's your biggest point about this book, about this journey? Because when people go through it, I'm sure you get called, people will start asking as they get deeper in the book, okay, I'm here, I need to go here. What's your favorite part of this book for you personally? You said, I got it. I know I got it. I know I'm helping these people out the right way. I think salary negotiation. Okay, break that down a little bit then. Most people don't know how to negotiate salary. And let's face it, most college professors don't know how either, right? Because they go into a job and, and 
it's if it's a public school, it's the range is right here and they're going to be somewhere in there. So they don't they don't know how to negotiate it. And why would a company teach you how to negotiate salary? Mm -hmm. And and so uh, what happens with me is I teach people how to negotiate salary. And then all of a sudden I'm extending an offer to somebody and then they use my script on me. <laughs> <laughs> I go. Have you ever Dang, caught anybody really doing that? Have, you, have you ever caught anybody really flipping the script on you? <laughs> oh yeah, I've had it a number of times. And I just go, they read my book. Yay! So let's, let's. Oh, sorry. So what I do in my book is in the salary negotiation area of my in that step is I take the curtain and I pull it back so that everybody understands what happens during a salary negotiation and why that person should follow my script. Now let's go talk on probably the biggest, hottest topic. And I think you covered it really well in the book, but I want you to reveal this. There's a buzzword, a hot word called ageism. And it's a landmine because you know, HR and things cannot bring this up, should not talk about it, but it's out there. Can you help us with this landmine, please? Yeah, you know, it's out there, but here's, here's the way to avoid it. <laughs> and, you know, people sometimes get tired of me saying networking, but when you network, what you're doing is you're going around HR to a decision maker. And that decision maker may decide that you know you're too old for them they may decide that mm -hmm. but chances are if you you have good experience they're not going to say that and what i've seen happen i i was recruiting for uh, transamerica out of cedar rapids iowa and and i was down in st petersburg at their offices down there and we were recruiting an it auditor and that it auditor I, I, I had oh, probably four candidates interview, two I didn't like at all, one I kind of liked, and then one I really liked. And it turned out the one I really liked was the one the manager really liked. And he was 65. And, wow. so, and so the manager called me into his office when he was all done, and he said, so, Bill, I really like this guy, but he's 65. He might leave in two years. And I said, well, the younger guy might leave in two years also. And Which is very true. No one thinks about that. There, there's no guarantees anymore, right? No, there's no guarantees. You got to treat them right or they're going to bail. So, so I, uh, I suggested if he liked the older guy better to hire him, he did. He hired him, and um, and in a way, his, it came true. He he left at 67 because he was promoted to the director of IT audit at Transamerica, and so they moved him up to Cedar Rapids. And so he did that. He did that job for five more years. So you can grow, you can scale, even over 50. You just prove it right there, which takes away that whole myth, that whole idea you can't. Perhaps my favorite chapter in the whole chapter, in the whole book, Bill, by the way, is later on in the book, but it's talking about successfully sourcing hidden positions. I, to me, I thought there was so much good stuff because we're thinking about the easy job. We're thinking about re-entry. We're thinking about, but you in a little bit different angle of there's hidden gems out there. Go dig for them. Can, can, can you highlight that a little bit? Sure. So... You know, sourcing positions is something that requires a little bit of an art, a little bit of a science. And first of all, it's a great idea to find the company or companies or industry that you want to work in. That's very important. And okay. once you found that industry or those companies, then go and find out what types of positions they have had open or that they have open and then go into LinkedIn 
under that company. And uh, what you can do is see employees on LinkedIn. So you click on that and then you see who it is that you may know or who may know somebody that you do know. And then you go out and you make sure that you network your way in. And it's a great way to have a digital tree. You, you start doing those from companies, doing the research, getting back in, and you build your own funnel, but you it's do. all already there sitting on the pages for you to go mine. We just don't think about mining it that way. And that's why I love the chapter. There's a lot of hidden gems that we just don't know about that you honestly do. Yeah, well, you know, on LinkedIn, when you look at somebody's profile to the right, there's another column that's narrower and it says people also viewed. And so what happens? It, um, LinkedIn, the algorithm watches somebody comes to your profile mm -hmm. and then it watches where it goes next, where they go next. And so that's where that is. The people and the people also viewed are the ones that looked at my profile and then said, oh, interesting. And then went on to somebody else and the people also viewed is over in that column. And I, I did a, recruit, a recruiting sourcing contract for a consulting firm, and they paid me <laughs> pretty good money to, <laughs> to source as many lead um, project managers who um, were in Manhattan that I could find. And I found 80 within probably about four hours. And wow. that's one of the ways I did it. See, again, that, that chapter was rich with so much fun stuff to go. So again, you got to get the book. You, you got to go dig into this. One final question. We're going to open this up in just a few moments. We're going to have another surprise guest dropping in very soon here. But Bill, we've talked about all the positive things, but we honestly have to look at the insights of learning from our mistakes. What's some of the big mistakes that professionals over 50 make as they go back out that you highlight in the book? You talk about sale negotiation, but salary negotiation, but what are the things that may maybe blunder and blow? Well, they, the biggest one that most of them make is they are not doing a nice job networking. They're not getting out and talking to people. And so the metrics, <clears throat> that are really important, 74 to 76% of all jobs are, are filled through networking, 74 to 76%. And that comes from the career transition industry also used to be known as outplacement. <clears throat> and so 8% of all jobs are filled through job boards. Hmm. Where are you going to spend your time? got to do it networking. So that's really important. The other thing is the, their resumes, if they're going to do posting and praying, it's important that their resume echoes and mirrors the job description perfectly because wow. the applicant tracking system is, they call it artificial intelligence. I call it artificial, artificial intelligence. <laughs> There's nothing intelligent about it. All it does is match keywords. And the problem is that it doesn't even accept, you know, let's say on this side, they put past tense of uh, founded. And then over on that side, on the resume, they put found. Well, they get dinged because they didn't have founded even though it's part of the same work. So the artificial intelligence screens you out and HR will only look at people who get an 85% match or above. One and that's, day, why your book, that's why your book is so important because they need to hit the mark. They need to read the book to learn how to do it. <laughs> exactly. One day I was coaching a guy with a Harvard MBA and the position that he was looking at, I had him in an applicant tracking software and the position he was looking at for some stupid reason had high school diploma required. Really? Now, 
Harvard MBA is probably not going to put high school diploma anywhere on his resume. No. He got dinged because he didn't have that. That again, that's some of the old school stuff that drives me crazy. And that's why, again, you need to read the book to learn the stuff to avoid the landmine. So you do succeed again, success, expect success. Bill dribbles it all throughout the book. Everybody is, it really is a great read. I dropped some links into the chat. We've been going on here. Make sure you follow those, check those out, get the ebook, uh, go give them some love on Amazon, order the book. And while we're doing all that fun stuff, I'm going to have our next guest come beaming on in here tonight. And uh, Christy Brockman. Christy, by the way, grew up in Colorado, has a BA in communication from the University of Colorado, now lives in Utah with her husband. And in 2018, she was looking for a new challenge. And she was not getting the results that she wanted until connecting with and networking with Bill Hubbard. <laughs> so Christy has not only read the book, but she's also been a satisfied customer. So Christy, we're gonna let you beam on here, come on down and Tell us a little bit about what you think about Bill Hubbard, the recruiter guy. All right. So I'm going to start off and talk about my favorite quote from Bill's book. And this quote is from the LinkedIn chapter. And Bill explains um, how to create awesome LinkedIn profiles. So the quote is, Humbert, I just need a job, not write a book. So Bill goes on to explain after that, that the, the work that you put in now will give you gains in the short term and in the future. So it's well worth all the work. Um, and I can attest to that too. So now I will shift over and talk about some of my experiences with Bill as my career coach. I wanted a new job and I had a master plan to get my PNP certification first and then to apply for jobs and get an amazing job in project management. So I got my certification and then I started to post and pray. <laughs> um, and anyways, I, I really was not getting any interviews, uh, submitting a ton of applications, no interviews. So I decided that I would seek the assistance of a career coach and very quickly came upon Bill. Um, we scheduled some sessions and Bill helped me a lot. And we went over things like networking, um, my here I am speech, and something that helped a lot were doing role play interview questions. And I'll talk a little more about salary negotiation. And that certainly uh, was had some awesome information that helped me out a ton. But really most importantly, um, Bill's coaching helped me gain confidence, and I use that every day in my life now. So uh, one example of, of how Bill helped me gain confidence was I, I had an interview, and I didn't get the job, but after the interview, uh, the gentleman said, I was interviewing me, interviewing me, that he was happy to have me reach out to him in the future if, um, if I needed to. Well, shortly after that, another position came up in the same company and I was wanted to apply for it. So I asked Bill for some assistance, um, some advice. And Bill said, you know, pick the phone, give him a call by all means, you know, yes. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I don't want to pick up the phone. <laughs> I'm nervous to do that. I don't want to be a burden to this interviewer. Uh, I don't want him to um, not want to help me. So anyways, after I got a pep talk, I picked up the phone and called this gentleman. And sure enough, he was so happy that I called and so flattered. And he went over and beyond. Not only um, did he help me, he walked my resume over to the hiring manager and also gave me his recommendation. So. Um, it was a huge help to get that little boost of confidence from Bill to, to make that call. Um, I did not get the job, <laughs> <however>. <laughs> but <laughs> lessons learned. Uh, so anyways, I did end up getting the right job um, right as COVID hit. And I had actually been talking to this uh, company for a couple months, developing a really great relationship with the hiring manager personally. So 
as soon as I got hired, uh, I was working with the company's recruiter and I got to use my new salary negotiation skills that I learned from Bill. So I negotiated successfully a 30% increase over my current salary. And then in addition to that was an annual bonus. Um, so I was extremely thrilled. Um, yes. So I've been with that company a couple of years now. It's great. Um, all in all, I am a huge advocate for Bill in his teachings, his coaching, and his book is, is amazing. And, and he's also an amazing friend. So thank you, Bill. Thank you, Christy, for that. Bill, what do you have to say with that gushing review right there for you? <laughs> well, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed, but uh, thanks, Christy. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> So here's our chance to open things up. Uh, we're gonna start beaming everybody into the gallery now. Thank you for watching and enjoying. Turn on your cameras, turn on your microphone when we call on you. And we're gonna let you ask the questions of the expert yourself. What were the things that we didn't cover? What are the things you wanna know? What are the things that may uh, be of importance to you? Again, use our chat box, use the Q&A if you want to. Uh, you can always type in a question and we'll read it back. But we'd love to have cameras on. We'd love to have you participate and actually uh, talk to the guy yourself, you use the button and it will help bump you to the front of the screen, the little reaction button. Uh, otherwise you have to jump up and down and dance to get bills or my attention. And I, I, I don't know if that's cool or not. Eddie's laughing because Eddie's probably got some good moves and I don't, I, I'm, I'm horrible. So <laughs> anyone got a question here tonight? Again, through the chat box, uh, the little chat box or through the Q and A box, please jump in and uh, fire away on the, what Bill's got for us tonight. Yeah, it's your opportunity to ask the recruiter guy. It's 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 free coaching. <laughs> right. What was the most challenging part of this book for you, Bill? As, as you got deeper into this, what was maybe some of the hardest part that you said, I've got to get this or this, but I don't know how to get there to explain in a way that people will get it. What, what was the challenges? You know, the um, the biggest challenge for me was actually getting it published. I, uh, I had a great editor in Daria. She was amazing and she was doing triple work. Her kids were at home, homeschooling. And so she was trying to do that. And she also had a full-time job and then she was editing my book and, and did a wonderful job doing it. But for her, um, she was so amazing that I, that was not a problem for me. And, and the pagination, I hired somebody that somebody knew. And, and so going through this whole thing, for me, the only thing that was difficult was really, I had this little problem where my initial publisher backed out mm. and, you know, they wanted to focus on something else and that's fine. And then I, decided to self-publish and then Dorrance Publishing came in and wanted to do my book. And so I, you know, so I said, well, you got 105 years or something of publishing experience. Okay, let's do it. So, so for me, probably the biggest thing was just getting to that point, getting it, getting it out. So I do have a question from the chat box now. Melinda Fausch is wanting to know, Bill, thank you uh, so much. Congratulations. But what are the two skills that you may need with people over 50 to get that job, to get the, to land it, to do it? What, what may be the top two skills right now? Well, uh, Miluna, uh, <laughs> we, we got to meet today, so that was fun. So the number one skill is you need to have a nice background in technology today. Mm. That's you know, you don't have to be a programmer, but you have to be confident with the technology and be able to use it. So that's probably number one. And number two is something, it's the old standby that is so important. You got to have the confidence that you can do it. And if you have the confidence, then what will happen is you'll be able to do it. So, so I think Technology is important, but also having the confidence to be able to go and do the job and then go do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious when it comes to the whole technology side of this, for the people over 50, do you almost have to reinvent yourself or, you, or can you go back into the career path or 
should you try to reinvent yourself and go after other opportunities that are new and available that weren't there before? It depends on the person, what you want to do. You know, I, I don't want to feel like I'm dancing, but if you want to go into a new area and you have the skills to be successful in that area, then I strongly suggest that you jump into it. And, you know, I'm doing that with speaking. I, I love speaking. Um, you can ask Shirley O'Donnell. She's got shaking her head. Yes. Right now. Uh, she's my uh, sister, my older sister. Well, I'm older than her, but she's the next one under. And she, and so she knows I love to speak, um, but I'm going to actually go out and get paid for speaking. So that's kind of more fun for me. And, uh, and, and, but, you know, I waited until I was, well, I'm 72 going on 73 now. And I'm excited about getting out there. Here's another one from the chat box coming on in here. Lynn, thank you very much for the question coming in. So Bill, how do you beat the system with regard to the keywords? All the AI stuff out there. How do you maybe get around some of the nuances and stack the deck? Great question, Lynn. I like this. <laughs> okay. Well, remember, that's called posting and praying. <laughs> so the best way to stack that deck is to go around it and network your way in. And think about this. If a vice president, if you network your way to a vice president, is HR going to say, but he didn't fill out the application yet? No, they're going to invite him in to interview. And so go around that, get rid of it. And then when you do have to fill out the application, it's going to be after you've had some interviews and then it's just a formality of getting it done and no applicant tracking system is going to screen you out. <laughs> I've had some friends go through that process trying to figure out how they could rig the system. So I, I just love the thought of how do you do it? But again, the system is actually rigged against you. That's, that's really the truth of the matter, right? Oh, exactly. Totally. Well, think about this. Look at human resources. They're wonderful people. However, <laughs> recruiting mirrors the sales process line by line, step by step, just like the career search mirrors the sales process. Now look at all of the other functions of human resources, benefits, compensation, employee relations, training and development. Those people doing that work are administrative or compliance people. Now, when was the first time you ever saw a compliance person be the top salesperson in the company? Not that I can ever recall. That's, that's, that's really not going to happen too often. Different yes. skill sets. They're different skill sets, right. And so the people who are doing the recruiting have the wrong skill sets. Recruiting, I'm, I have a five-minute uh, disrupt HR speech. And it's a good thing it's only five minutes because by the time they figure out what I'm saying, it'll be too late to get the rotten tomatoes out and throw it at me. <laughs> And, and the speech is delete recruiting from HR. And the message is put it where it belongs, over in operations, where in operations they can make changes if they have to, but they're the ones feeling the pain. So put it into operations. Operations has sales managers. They understand the sales process. It's the right place for recruiting to be. Another question coming from the chat box here, Bill, is, any suggestions for a career change after 17 years? They've invested in quality time, but what do you do now and they want to make a change? Well, first of all, find out, talk to people, you know, give somebody you know in that new career area a call and just say, hey, can I have an informational interview with you and learn about what's required in these positions in this new area? And then see if you've got the skills. And if not, maybe go back to school and pick up some skills. So it's, it's not magic. It just <laughs> takes work. Maybe that's one of the biggest takeaway from your book. Honestly, part of that success is roll up your sleeve. This takes work. It's not just going to happen. You do play a big part in your own success. 
but you have to get back in, dust off some skills, reinvent, learn some new skills. You do have to do things intentionally to go be successful again, correct? That's correct. That's correct. It, I, I tell uh, managers when I'm doing the talent attraction side of my business, I tell managers, hey, recruiting is not magic. It requires focus and hard work. Well, the same is true of your career search. It's not magic. You may get lucky and that's great. That's because you're doing all the right things, but it's not magic. It requires focus and hard work. I'm just glad we're done with the classifieds. Does anyone want to agree with me on that? Who, who's yeah. done with the Saturday classified search when you're going through those and circling and calling and trying to find the addresses and the old, uh, yeah. I'm so glad those days are gone. We're gonna have another uh, special guest beaming in here now and uh, give him more love and uh, talk a little bit about his relationship with Bill. Uh, Tom Granolski, he is here and he's a guest, but he has a true lifelong friend with Bill. Now this goes way, way, way back. This goes back to the summer of the sophomore year back in high school. Tom is retired now officially, but still serves as a career development coach. Whenever the opportunity presents, uh, he's able to get out and nationally, internationally deal with clients spanning all industries and functionality, different disciplines. Tom admits to using many of Bill's techniques ripped right out of the pages of this book, Expect Success. Tom, we're going to bring you in, and I know we've had some communication problems in a moment. I'm going to see if we can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, really do appreciate that and to be a part of this austere panel. Um, uh, everything that uh, Rich has uh, said is true. I've uh, known Bill since my sophomore year in high school, and uh, I had the privilege of uh, sitting in front of him uh, in our um, uh, various classes. And I also had the, the distinct uh, pleasure of spending many a day with him uh, in uh, detention uh, together. And our moms uh, really thought that uh, school ended at 5 p.m. Uh, on those special days. So um, that kind of you know, sets the stage for my relationship with Bill. And um, the, the other thing that I have to say is that uh, indeed I picked up a lot of uh, techniques uh, from Bill and how he goes about, uh, you know, counseling uh, his uh, particular clients as well as relating with various companies. But I learned this very, very, very early on. And this is going to be a revelation on a, on a national program with Rich. Um, and it goes back to my sophomore year in high school. And I, you know, I didn't know that uh, Bill's sister Shirley was going to be on the, uh, on the program here today. But uh, when we first moved uh, into the area, I uh, had this tremendous uh, crush on uh, Shirley. And I did ask Bill for an introduction to his, uh, his wonderful and uh, very beautiful and still very beautiful sister. And uh, Bill was, uh, you know, so kind to do that. So in, in terms of networking, that was my first real exposure to networking. And I did do that uh, uh, through, uh, through Bill Humber. And so I've been extremely fortunate to have uh, Bill in my life through all of the ups and downs of what we experience on the highway of life. Uh, yes, through high school and certainly into university times and first jobs, our career advancements, our marriage, our children, our grandchildren. And um, again, truth be told, um, and, and I believe this in my heart, um, Bill actually moved to Park City, Utah, where I had been living since two, in the year 2000. And he moved there in about 2007, 2008. And I think he just moved there just to be closer to me. Um, and this was just about an eight minute walk, um, you know, from my home to his. So we've been very close uh, through, uh, throughout our entire, um, you know, essentially lives. But now seriously. Um, since day one, when I met Bill, he really exudes unbreakable optimism from a bottomless pit of overwhelming positivity. And in, it, it, it exhibits itself in everything he does. And truly nothing gets by him when it comes to careers and recruiting. His approach, like mine, 
was formed long ago when we were in high school. And it was instilled upon us, the way we approach things is a manner of structured thinking. And by structured thinking, we mean, um, and Bill means, and I mean, that we really want to challenge the present in order to find a path to the future. And that helps itself in, um, you know, helping individuals find um, their next station in life. And whether it's a freshly minted uh, university degree or somebody looking to move from their first job and move to a higher level or move into middle management or senior management or move into executive management or the C-level offices, it's all about finding a path to the future and the structured thinking process that goes about that. And for those of us who have had the opportunity to, to, to read Bill's Expect Success, um, that is what um, the, the, the whole outline, if you want, is about. Expect success and then structure your way of thinking of how to get there. So imagine yourself already there and maybe work yourself backwards a little bit to find out how did I get there? I mean, and it does work. And so, you know, I don't want to belabor the point, um, you know, about Bill. Um, he is a great guy. He's a great friend. He will always be a great friend. My wife sang at, at, the, at their wedding. Um, so it was uh, a very, very um, longstanding relationship that we <laughs> developed a long, a long time ago. Now, I will want to comment on one of the questions that, uh, you know, that, that came through the chat box, Rich. And that was the, the one about uh, the question about uh, the, the keywords and how do you get by the artificial intelligence? How do you get by uh, human resources and try to navigate your way through there? Um, yes, I used the approaches that Bill has, but I have maybe one additional unique and maybe it's not always the kosher way of doing it. Okay. But, but think of where a applicant may have their CV that they've already so diligently prepared and it looks magnificent. I mean, you could frame it and put it on a wall. It looks that good, but now you got to submit it. So find a little bit of white space down on the bottom margin, down on the bottom margin, create a text box down there and do not put a border around it, but initially type it in, in black um, uh, font, okay? But now when you've already got all these keywords, all these keywords that you can ever, ever, ever think of that you can't fit into your regular resume or your CV, change those keywords that, that color the font, change it to white, okay? So now when it goes through the artificial intelligence system, not only does it have the embedded keywords in there, but it also has 101 other keywords in there that might might suit you as well. So anyway, just just one of my approaches that maybe not appear in in Bill's book. Last um, thing I want yep. last thing I want to mention about Bill's book. Um, one of the things that is a potential falsehood in Bill's book is he claims to have a good basketball hook shot. That's not the case. He has no good basketball hook shot. I've been there. I've watched it. I've observed it over these years. But that's okay, Bill. We still love you. Dom, that was awesome. Thank you for some personal insights. Uh, thank you that we now know that networking is also dating. That's great. Yep. <laughs> we, we, we love to know that. Thank you for all the words and everything else. Bill, we got to give away some prizes, man. We got some fun stuff here. So we we're going to open it up and we're going to spin the magic wheel here in a second. And we're going to start with a couple different prizes. And we're going to start with uh, the ebook, a copy of the ebook format. And you're going to have the ebook Expect Success, The Science of the Over 50 Career. I'm going to bring our uh, magical dial up here. And we have names already populated on here. And we get to spin the dial. This is interactive now, everybody. If, if, if you can cheer, you can laugh, you have a good time, you want to enjoy this. So uh, we are going to spin the dial and let's see what we get for a lucky winner for this ebook. And here we go. And Bill, you got to call out the name. I'm, I'm going to let you play along, Bill. 
Eddie Turner Jr. <laughs> and he gets himself an ebook to go with the hard copy, a little soft copy. So he got congratulations, Eddie. And Eddie, again, thanks for being here tonight and having fun with us as well. So uh, we're going to have to remove your name. You, you, you can't win again, Eddie. You're, you're, you're off the clock now. Number two, Bill, is the autograph bundle. We're going to have both of the books that were selected by C Suite Network as one of the 100 plus best books to read for best business. Uh, there was only a few authors who were, were selected more than once in that selection process, by the way. Bill was one of them. Expect Success, The Science of the Over 50, Search, his new book. And the other one is Employee 5.0, Search of a Successful Job, Search in the New World Order. And we're going to give that to some lucky winner right now. And here we go, everybody. And we'll get over it. Oh, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> By the way, we will make sure we get all the email contact and all that thing sent, and we will trade information to make sure we can pass this on and get this from Bill to you properly. Now, here is the grand prize, everybody. The grand prize is going to be three 90 minute career search coaching sessions. Not one, not two but three and the winner, they will get to select the times and communicate with Bill and make this all happen. Bill, you wanna say anything about this great, great grand prize you got thrown in here? Well, just one thing, and that is, if you don't currently need it, but you know somebody who does, you can give it to them. Just make sure I know who it is that I need to talk to. So you can pass it on in kind as a great, great gift. Again, here we go, the grand prize. And, and, oh, Larry Walter. I don't think Larry was here tonight. I he think wasn't? Larry could not make it this evening. Oh. Bill, you know what we got to do now? We got to do it again. We, 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 we got to take Larry off and we got to do it again. Look, Charity would have been next. Sorry, Charity, <laughs> we got to spin it. We got to go for it. Adrian, is she still in the house? <laughs> so you know, she, I I hope so. She, I'm pretty sure she is. She, Adrian, is the director of the Park City Library, and uh, starting in July, I'm going to be the chair of the library board. Wow, wow! I am scanning through here right now. I do not see her on Bill. Oh. Oh, no, I we, we we have to do one more opportunity. Her name gets free. See, this one gets fun. It's process of elimination. Someone's going to win it. By the yeah. way, you have to tell her she won the grand prize. As yep. soon as you lose, Bill, you, you, you have to do it. Here we go. Oh, Pam, still Pam with us? Skinner, she here? Is Pam still with us? Let me double check. We've got people with cameras off, people with cameras on. I know Cherry was frothing at that. She was she was so much. <laughs> she wanted that. She was sitting up in her chair. Do you see her leaning into that, Bill? Yeah, she was. Yeah. All right. She keeps surrounding That's twice it. now, Charity. You've been close. One more try. One more try. We're going to have this happen here. Aaron Foley, I know she has been on tonight. So Aaron Foley will be our great prize winner. Three opportunities with you, Bill. And as Bill, as we wind down here tonight, again, I'm going to drop in some social media links, let people find you. But how? Well, what's the best thing you do to summarize the book, you, and how they can best follow up with you? Well, the best, the best way to summarize the book is it's simply a step-by-step -step guide to find your next position. And the um, the five star review that I received, the fellow who wrote the review said, I wish I had this book when I was recently doing my job search. And by the way, you don't have to be over 50. This is good for everybody. Perfect. I'm also going to drop in. This is some of the Barnes and Noble. This is your Amazon. Please, everybody go out, give them some love. 
purchase the book, download the ebook, give them some reviews so you can continue to push this out further and further and further. Phil Hubbard, this has been a blast. Uh, thank you everybody for being here tonight. Again, thank for our three special guest stars who beamed in to added some fun and liveliness to this. And again, coming up in the month of, we're in May, coming up in June, we will be having another book launch. Uh, and we look forward to doing that uh, with Pat Laurie. Pat Laurie is a broadcaster, speaker, and coach. So we're going to have another book launch coming up with Rock the Stage Media. And again, if you want to learn more about Rock the Stage Media, that's rockthestagemedia.com. Final words from your Bill, before we say goodnight. I just want to thank everybody for coming. This was fun, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you enjoy the book as much as Christy did. Bill Hubbard, have a great night. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. I'm Rich Bontrager, The Trigger, and we'll see you around. Have a good night.